the board of directors to actively play a strategic role and also ensure that the organization works in a better way and is not manipulated by the chief executive officer. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if we look at this diagram, then we see on one side, the management is controlling the levers of power and the other one, the board is basically controlling the levers of power. Now, when we look at the management, then we see that the chairman and the chief executive, which I basically mentioned earlier on, were in one position. Now, with the chair and chief executive being in one position, then we see that the executives and non-executives were basically on the periphery and the chair and the chief executive were basically managing the ordering of accounts, the executive remuneration, the board appointments and the investor relations. So, these four major functions were basically being managed by one particular individual and that one particular individual was all powerful. So, everyone was subjugated where everyone became subservient and the board was just uh, a whitewash just window dressing. Now, when we look at the other model, then what we see is, is that in that model which currently exists is that the chair and chief executive became two different positions intertwined with each other, functioning together, but separate. And therefore, there was this more control and balance. We see that uh, the executives uh, and the non-executives and then the non-executives were playing a major role uh, in, in, the, in the management uh, of, the con uh, of the company. So, what we see is, is that there is an audit committee, there is a remuneration committee, there is a uh, nomination committee and uh, there is uh, also uh, a, another uh, committee which is looking after the different investors and the different stakeholders. So, uh, what we see is, is that all of the major decisions were coming through these different committees and based upon that, we can basically see that the functioning of the board became more independent, became more intrusive, became more structured and most importantly, there was cross accountability uh, between the non-executives and the executives and the role of the all-powerful chairman oblique uh, chief executive officer was further divided into two positions whereby uh, this cross accountability would ensure uh, that arbitrary decisions were not taken, that arbitrary functioning uh, would not take place and that it would not be a whimsical management, but would be a multi-tiered, structured, well thought out management and resulting in better tactical deployment uh, of the organizational human resource. So, that is how we see that different reforms basically emerged in the past 20 years and now uh, they are being followed across the world. Thank you so much.